What's up guys? So today I'm going to be bringing you guys a deck guide for my Fizz Teemo deck. I use this deck to get rank 1 masters in North America. So uh, I think it's a pretty strong deck. I mean it's like probably a little bit weaker than some of the other stuff like uh, Go Hard or Feel the Rush for example. But I think it can compete with most meta matchups and give you, you know, just an off meta example of um, a fun deck that could actually be played at a high level. So today I'm going to be going over the cards, giving some strategies on ways to play the different cards that we have in here, as well as giving you guys some actual gameplay and uh, meta matchups and just showing like the way that I would approach those matchups and you guys could kind of uh, try the deck out for yourself and see uh, what you guys can do. So first off we have Poro Cannon. I'm gonna go over some of like the later game cards first to show like how these cards complement our late game as well. Like one of the cards is a uh, mind melt. So I mean this goes without saying, you know, every spell we cast is just gonna be good of going towards a big mind melt. The mind melt is just a one of, it really only hits specific matchups. For example, uh, Fiora, Zoe, and um, that strategy of like, just putting all in on one unit we don't really have like we have like options to potentially remove them but the whole thing is they have different various ways to protect them so if they get like a big sparkle fly and you're not going to be really able to get like chip damage in to kill them you could use mind melt to just go for like a big swing and kill them in one turn which is kind of going to need to be your go-to play and in matchups where the mind melt isn't really necessary, you draw it early, we can discard it with Poro Kin and get excited and still get the value off of it or just shuffle it back into our deck with pick a card. So that makes it a little less clunky. And if we ran more than that, I think a uh, high probability you're gonna be losing a lot of games for it. Just double drawing mind melt is not gonna be something you ever wanna see. So I think as a one of it's like perfect niche right there. Then we have Wiggly Burblefish, which is like one of my favorite cards from the new expansion. And it's really, good with this deck it like synergizes really well and this card in itself like will push a lot of victories so those two cards are going to benefit from what i'm going to talk about for like the rest of the deck so poro cannon as well as being a you know just elusive generator chump block generator potential suit up target it has a lot of versatility here as well as like if there's a card we can't play off our pick a card since they're fleeting anyways you could just make use of those as well as the ballistic bot ignition there's like tons of targets that you'll have for the poro cannon sometimes you might have to discard a card that we'd rather play but overall i think it hits pretty well so what it also does is by playing it you're essentially lowering the cost of your burble fish for free without spending any mana which could be very clutch in a lot of situations and then Fizz, obviously. So one of my favorite interactions that happens generally, so you guys all know that Go Hard is kind of like the menace of the meta right now. So a common scenario, and one I try to shoot for as often as possible against Go Hard, is you look for Fizz, you always look for Fizz in that matchup. Fizz is really good into, against Go Hard because they don't run many copies of Whale, which is like the biggest enemy of Fizz. And even if they do, if you have suit up, if you could suit up a Fizz, like he's pretty much unstoppable. Like they cannot remove him from the board. Or if you can level him and then drop him in, you can get a lot of value. Or like bait them into just like tapping out of whale mana and then you can go in for like pretty much guaranteed like Fizz spell force combos and things that just blow them up for a ton of damage. But anyways, the interaction I'm talking about, you look for Fizz, Poro Cannon, turn one. You play Fizz on turn one, almost always if they have the Go Hard in their hand, they're gonna look at this as their opportunity to remove Fizz. You get a Poro Cannon off, you fizzle a Go Hard, and it essentially like eats away at their whole strategy because now they have to find another Go Hard within their deck and who knows how long that'll be before they can even start to develop a Go Hard strategy. So like this is a big counter and if you're able to get this interaction to happen on turn one, I feel like this is a pretty winning matchup from that point. Teemo just gives you a ton of value with like buff caps throughout the game as well as still being a target similar to um, all these other units as a target that we could use our buffs on. You have a lot of buffs that, you know, just any elusive body is good for us. Ballistic Bot is a card you generally want to mulligan for and it hits a lot of uh, different synergy points within the deck. One, you have Ballistic Bot and Fizz on uh, the ground together you will always have a spell to activate your Fizz. 
and whatever other spells you have can be dedicated towards protecting him against other targets and uh just you know potentially you can go for a more risky play because you'll have to use less spells overall so like ballistic bot will give you a ton of spells which hyper levels burble fish not levels but reduces the cost of it and the, the faster you can get burble fish lower the better it'll be for uh, because of the next card we're gonna uh, talk about here which is uh iterative improvement which generally i know a lot of people like will this is like a common misplay it's not like a misplay but like a style difference is i'll see people use this on enemy units on some of our units that i probably wouldn't use it on like zap for example zap is not a bad hit or improvement at all but it's not your priority your highest priority is going to be keeping your improvements and keeping at least one burble fish if you can and once you get them down to zero there are tons of situations where you can like threaten like a wide board for example bait out removal and they'll think like you know there's not much you could do with like four mana for example but if you have like a multiple burble fish hand you could essentially set up like otks with burble fish because Burble fish reduce cost for each spell you cast in the game and that applies to the copies as well. You can make multiple zero mana burble fishes and just a full board of elusives that deal a ton of damage because burble fish has a pretty strong and aggressive stat line. So if you're able to play them effectively, this is like one of the strongest points in the deck I feel. And ballistic bot just helps you to make that happen even earlier. The earlier in the game, the less answers they'll have with as well as you being able to deal damage from the ignitions and just deal damage overall chipping at them with the other elusives that we have in our deck and you know the blow up potential of cards like spell force and suit up then we have some burn options for get excited and aftershock i like three get excited here because of again the ignition is a good target you could just use that as your discard fodder for get excited and you don't have to like lose card advantage with it still dealing the three damage which is really good and then it's just reach overall if you're like a little bit off of damage you can go for that there aftershock here so a lot of people will be using this for landmark removal and i found through playing it that's originally what my plan was when i put this in there it's just you know landmark removal that's also versatile as a burn option and i felt through play like the biggest example of this is grand plaza whenever i would use aftershock as removal against the grand plaza deck we ended up behind overall. I think we generate enough units in this deck to just kind of ignore Grand Plaza and just try to like strike and uh, deal as much damage on our turns and then just chump block away with things like Cast Salesman. We could just, the one thing about Grand Plaza that's really in our favor with something like Cast Salesman is they always want to develop into Grand Plaza because Grand Plaza is a card that you know only lasts for the round so they're gonna want to be playing the units on the same as their attack you put cast salesman and it just will stop like damage from going through like all together so like i think it's really good in grand plaza matchup so he's a card that that's like his biggest utility for so this aftershock generally just acts as extra reach and pushes uh, more damage overall and uh we run one mystic shot here which is you know mystic shot's a good card kind of versatile i only have one here though because in select scenarios like you're gonna be wanting to look for get excited pick a card and improvement as better hits for zap so you don't want to ruin your zap odds i think I mean, one mystic shot is good as just like a flexible removal for a situation like if you need to get rid of like a lucian there's a lot of good hits obviously for mystic shot it's a good card but i think because of the zap interaction i just want to keep that at one mystic shot suit up a ton of one mana elusives and the good thing about one mana elusives with suit up is let's say you brick out on a suit up and you have it at a turn that you can't play it and you have to play it at four mana if you play one of these one mana elusives on turn one or turn two you still have the mana to turn three suit up or four mana which generally unless you're playing against a hush deck is still a pretty strong play and you're still able to get the value so it's like even if it bricks you can still get some value off of it if it's really bricking your hand Pick a card, you can shuffle it back into the deck and have a higher probability of drawing it back at two mana, which is really good. Or just discard it early with Poro Cannon. Zap is just, you know, he's a great card in the meta overall. He's just able to generate value as well as being a good elusive body. And he's able to find you, I generally, I feel like the most useful thing you could find from him is pick a card because you play it on your opponent's turn, you pull a pick a card, and then you generate the ability to have a strong attack going into your next turn. So I think that's like, Pretty much all the cards in the deck here 
and some basic strategy for like ways to use the card and apply them. So with that being said, uh, I'm just going to jump into some games for you guys. I have some good meta matchups for you guys to just check out and see how I play them. But yeah, guys, appreciate you guys checking out the video. That's going to be it from me. Enjoy the games. All right, go hard. So here I want to be looking for Fizz. I'm going to keep Teemo round one just to develop a unit potentially and still have like a play on this. But Fizz is what we definitely want to be drawing into as the game keeps going. We'll take the two damage. That's fine. Prismat, Jagged Butcher. I like it. Okay. Yeah, here I'm going to end up open attacking because I'm never going to uh, develop this into like an attack. And Gohard punishes uh, my Teemo attack. And even if Teemo only pushes one damage and Gohard can literally like get rid of that, um, getting puff caps in their deck is good if you can because obviously they'll be doing like a lot of drawing throughout the game. Don't develop anything. So in this case, I'm probably just okay with letting this damage go through. Play a second Ballistic Bot and Ignition. So I'm using as many Ignitions as possible to get Burble Fish online earlier is definitely going to be good for us because Burble Fish, if we can draw into improvement, it's going to be a really big play we can make to just like give us the opportunity as the game keeps going. We're going to give him an opportunity to clear our Teemo too before um, doing anything because that way if he clears Teemo, we have a second Teemo in hand. Yeah, and this is all good by me. I don't want to attack with these guys because if he's thinking Twisted Fate red card, I don't want these guys to be down to one health. And now Teemo is able to get up to two health thanks to um, the fact that we have second Teemo in hand. I want to wait until he tries to like make a play on this Teemo before I buff it right now. And now getting the extra um, buff caps in his deck is also good as he's going to be making a lot of plays to try and draw for more uh, Gohards. So this is all good. I'm pretty happy with the position we're in. And I'm fine to block with these Ballistic Bots now because we got the value off of them. We'll be able to have a zero mana Burble Fish and um, pick a card as our place this round. Like, I'm going to block this here. Block both of these. And if he wants to take the red card now to um, clear our Ballistic Bots, that's fine with me. So we'll still be able to get this down to zero and hopefully off the pick a card again we'll be able to draw either more burble fish or improvement which will be just really good overall i'm honestly uh thinking of picking a card on zap here just to have the second one potentially because we might need another big turn after this so it could be important for us yeah, there's the Twisted Fate that I was talking about. I could play Burble Fish here. The only issue with that is if he does have Go Hard and he clears this and I draw Improvement and I won't be able to play it on this, that could be worse than just holding um, the Burble Fish. Start off with Fizz because he's, you know, a unit that's not susceptible to, like, dying to anything thanks to his, uh, Defense. This gives them opportunity to play under Ruination Mana, which would be nice. Yeah, I like that. Get as many Burble Fish as we can down right now. And he doesn't have mana for a whale, so this is like huge attack for 10. And we're one off lethal on this round. Keep that back. Oh, we have lethal, actually. So hopefully no heals on his end. And yeah, if you're just able to get like a strong enough hand against Gohard, you can 
you know, put in a lot of damage really quick and put them in some tough situations. Um, some run Bile Feast, he clearly didn't have it, and that's it, GG. Raven Ezreal, so like, this is a great hand. Fizz is huge in this matchup. Um, Ballistic Bot also is just great universally. He just makes the deck like run really smooth and Poro Cannon. Because I'm going to play Fizz on turn one. Can bait out a removal option from him that we could punish with the Poro Cannon potentially. And if not, we just use it with Ballistic Bot later on. So like, I'm perfectly fine with all of this. I think I'll be getting rid of the cast salesman here. Zap has the potential to pull pick a card, which does help to um like just keep fueled up and like push throughout the game. We literally have our own. We do this here to like fake. Yeah, he's just thinking if he wants to call us out on a yep, end round there. So we bluffed having protection for Fizz and now we can actually run with real protection for him we play a Poro to block the Ezreal here I'm fine with doing develop Ballistic Bot if he goes for Fizz fine with me we're bluffing still this 2 mana so this 2 mana is just like literally just something we're holding up to Bluff a spell. We're gonna do this here to see if we can actually pull a two mana spell. Okay, we have nothing. So I'm probably gonna end up just attacking with Zap then. Zap and the bot, um, I think would be good. Depends on what he plays here. I mean, if he doesn't play anything, like we don't even have to make Fizz elusive necessarily. Yeah, stun there. In this case, I probably just pass. I'll have to like commit to flock here. Or just literally mystic. In this case, I'm going to ignition and offer a trade to the Ezreal. We have like more fuel than he has, so I'm down to make this trade. And if he doesn't want to trade Ezreal, I'll just go for two. Cool with this. It also bluffs suit up, which is good, because if he has um the fear of me pulling a suit up off of the top, um, you know, he'll be uh scared to make that trade. Well, getting damage in this matchup is just huge. Like when they're in regions with no healing, any chip damage you could get really adds up. Uh what I do here. Pick a card of Poro. And yeah, we're going to trade into this Ezreal. We can take three. That's fine. We're just clearing this path for our other units to do damage. I think it's going to be good for us. I just pass here. I'm down to make him burn mana. If he doesn't do anything, this is fine too. The thing about Ezreal decks is like they have a limited amount of removal that they could get off per turn, so developing all at once can be pretty strong for us. Start off with Fizz, probably go into Teemo, Zap, maybe even just Zap, maybe like suit up into Zap. If we do that, we'll have three mana and we can still spell force. And yeah, now we have a spell force punish, which is really good. And if not, we'll play uh, these guys after. Boom, push for 10. And we have lethal with uh, aftershock and use cast salesman. So like, this should just be a clean dub. Removal here. Now we're one off, potentially. Um, but getting one damage when we have Fizz developed like this is pretty easy. We're going to end up taking a block. We just don't want any, like, funny business happening. Cast Salesman if he develops. 
all fine. Start off by playing Zap, I think. It's getting another spell on the board to protect. Yep. Improvement is a good pull. Gotta look for some options here for sure. Time for a true display of skill. Aftershock this. Does Fizz level from it? Yeah, Fizz levels, so he does survive a thermo. So this is good. No way. And again, we do have a spell to protect also. Yeah, this is really nice. There's no, there's no way he can make a play on Fizz here. This is uh, just GG. It'd be like double get excited, we just improvement. Fizzles both of them too, so it's like super fire. Yeah, uh, Ezreal Javen's a pretty good matchup for us, so like we just love to see that. Do we go one of of uh, maybe Lux? I think. I think this is a pretty good mulligan. Start with Fizz. Plays a soldier on one. I don't really care. Yeah, so just play Fizz. Develop this. Develop the bot. Dale Cascade is a thing, so I probably. Gotta be like limited with my blocks. Now I can just go for that. If he has hush, you know, at least the units still trade off and we get a hush out of the way. But if not, yep, four damage. Rule him off hush for like these five cards. <laughs> that uh, instantly changes the game plan every time. You just gotta adapt it to make it work for that. Do not care about the damage. This deck is not an aggressive list, so like. Sure, it's all good. You like could just like set up and like stabilize, and then later on, like once we have Poros develop, you could use them for uh, blocks as like the game is going. You know, I could play both of these and still have Spell Force mana, which is pretty nice. And something like Spell Force, like if he does go for a hush, I could um, protect Fizz. And still trade off this uh three six shield bearer which is kind of nuts so yeah just go for six here but yeah preserving the four attack i think in this situation does make this trade worth you cannot sway me. keep them alive lower the cost of the burble fish as well which is good boom one hush down still have four four fizz ready to rock and he'll be leveling like pretty much next round guaranteed. The strength of the sun and my faith are one. Yeah, that's like some good healing, obviously, but like, I mean, I think we just blocked the five damage, but outside of that, this is fine. We're gonna be playing two burble fish next round anyway, so the board space being cleared up is like kind of what we're looking for in a way. Play both of these first and get the Burble Fish down to zero cost. Cask will be good if he develops into anything. Especially if he drops something like Leona, like, uh... That's all good. Is... 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, I just really like here having the Ballistic Bot at the attack it's at because it just means like he can't stun fizz it's pretty huge seven eight and 13. swing in for 13 here assuming he drew into another hush though yep figured as much 
he were banned. Lightly unfortunate, but Morning, take you. yeah, smarter for him, but we didn't have a counter to it, so I'd rather have this trade off anyways. I'm gonna play jailbreak just to have like a blocker, depending on what he plays. I just have a unit that I'm willing to just throw out there. Eight damage. We're still like, yeah, we're close. Obviously, things like star shaping could make it more difficult. I'm just going to end round here because like these two units pushing for three on an open attack is fine with me. Yeah, this is more what I figured. Now I'll play Jailbreak. Is this third Sun Forger or second? I think it might be second. It's all crazy, but it's all good. Yeah, that's nuts. Fire off some ignitions here. Asserted. The annoying part is that this dies no matter what, but I could deny the healing, which is cool. Like, I like that aspect of it. It makes me wish that at some point we got a block off on this. Four damage. Three. Uh, it's cool. Ignition first, just to see if we can get him to tap his mana and see, like, what kind of options we're open to. Some aggressive passing going on. I think that's fine. You got for me with this one mana spell, man. Plaza, interesting. I think I gotta try this here. Make him develop a unit. Yeah, if I could push with these ballistic bots, it'll be, it'll be good. Gotta take advantage of the sneaky, sneaky lethal we got. Sure, that's the thing he could do for sure, but I mean, I still just drag this into the one one. He needs to uh, have a unit here. Nothing? Yeah. Should be GG. The EB warned crazy right there. But yeah, that was a that was a good one. That was a good one for sure.